Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ufiruhu Bihi wa nukminu bihi wa natawakkar alayhi Rashidu an la ilaha illallah Wahdahu la sharika lah Amma ba'd Fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى التي بارتنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear respected listeners, the ayah that I recited uh, talks about a particular happening in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, which is one of the greatest miracles of the Prophet ﷺ. The greatest miracle of the Prophet ﷺ is the Quran and revealed by the ulama, but among the other greater ones is the journey over land and into the skies by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to honor the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to show him how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares about him how much he is valuable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mala'il a'la the angels the other holy beings in the skies so the background of this journey is that the Prophet ﷺ, although he has said that overall about his overall life he has said that I was scared, made to fear and I was bothered in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than every single other human being so not even the Anbiya who were torn apart into two pieces not even the Anbiya who were thrown into fire they suffered more in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a general statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But there's few happenings that happened in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that were particularly hard upon this person. It comes in narration that Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what was the hardest day of your life? What was the day of your life that was the most difficult for you, the most painful for you? Agonizing. And as they, she thought that Uhud, the day where Sattar, uh, Sattar, uh, 30, uh, 70 uh, Sahaba were martyred in a single day and the Prophet ﷺ himself received major injuries and a setback, maybe that was the hardest day. So she said, was there any day apart from Uhud that was even harder than Uhud? The Prophet ﷺ said that yes, the narration, he explained the day of Taif, the day when he went to Taif. And the background was that the Prophet ﷺ had been in seclusion, all his family, all his relatives had been in seclusion in such a in such a severe social boycott that they were not even allowed to take food from outside. And in that situation, many Sahaba became sick, many women lost their lives, many children lost their lives, and it comes in narrations that his beloved first wife, Sayyidah Khadir al-Kubra anha, became so severely sick and weak that within a few days after that social boycott ended, she passed away. In that period, his strongest support on earth, his <coughs> uncle, Sayyidina Abu Talib, he also passed away. And he was such a person that his life had been spent supporting the Prophet ﷺ. And then the Prophet ﷺ was driven out of Makkah because of the pain that was being given to him by the suffering that was caused to him by the people around him who belonged to 
most of them his own family. Then he was driven out of Makkah and he went to Taif to try and call people towards the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine the condition of a man who is driven out by their family from his hometown and he has a message that he is not willing to give up. He went to the people of Taif and they ridiculed the Prophet ﷺ and that is a whole different story. But they driven him out of their town as well. And Sayyid Hazrat Zaid bin Hazrat was with him. After this whole incident when they were returning to Makkah, Hazrat Zaid bin Haris asked the Prophet ﷺ that how are we going to enter back into Makkah? We were driven out by the, so basically what place do we have to go back to? We have no place to call home basically. In his hometown, the place where he was born, the Prophet ﷺ had to stay out for a bit before returning to Makkah and ask, request different people to give him protection, to be able to enter into his own hometown. These are the mercies of the Prophet ﷺ upon us that we don't care about. Finally, he was given aman or protection by someone and then he returned to, he was able to finally enter into Makkah and go to the Kaaba and pray there. In, right after those days, when the Kuffar had made the life of the Prophet unbearable, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to show the Prophet that these people on the ground may humiliate you and may not let you live, but your true value in our eyes, in the eyes of the people who inhabit, in, in the eyes of the arwah that inhabit the skies, is this, is such. One night the Prophet ﷺ has narrated that he was saying, he was sleeping in the house of Umihani anha. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel and he awoke the Prophet ﷺ and asked him to go and sleep into near the Kaaba itself. And the Prophet ﷺ went there and then went, went to sleep there. Then he again came back and this time he came back with not alone but other archangels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. About Jibreel and Mikail, it is confirmed narration that both of them came to the Prophet ﷺ to take him on that journey. And they brought brought with him, with them a special ride for the Prophet which is known as Burraq and that Burraq was also a common narration that even among the group of Burraq that Burraq was specially selected for the Prophet and when they awoke the Prophet وسلم, I don't want to go into the details because we don't have a lot of time but as the Prophet وسلم, was to mount that ride the one holding his foothold to get up on the right was none other than Jibreel himself. And the one holding the reins of the right of Burra was Mikail. And thus the Prophet ﷺ climbed onto Burra. And then the Prophet ﷺ was taken to different places. This journey on land is called Asra, which is talked about in the beginning of the first part of the, uh, the 15th Jews of the Quran. The Prophet was taken to Medina first and he was asked by Jibir to pray to Raqqa'at. Then to Madian, pray to Raqqa'at. Then to other places and to Raqqa'at everywhere. The ulama have written that from this we also establish that the minimum amount of prayer is to Raqqa'at. Everywhere Jibir asked the Prophet to pray to Raqqa'at. So nawafil, minimum nawafil are to Raqqa'at. One nafil or one rakat of prayer in any form is not driven from hadith anywhere. There is no record of it anywhere in the whole uh, collection of hadith. Anyway, finally the Prophet ﷺ reached uh, uh, the masjid of Bayt al -Maqdis. But on the way, the Prophet ﷺ was shown some visions. The one thing to be remembered about this whole journey is that the whole point of this journey was that the Prophet ﷺ with his body and his spirit was taken on this journey. Some people try to confuse by saying that this was maybe a dream. 
or maybe only his spirit was traveling, not his body. The thing to notice, the thing to remember is that if it was a dream, there is nothing particular about a dream. All of us have dreams. Weird dreams where we travel very fast, where we fly in the sky, where we see the scenes from Akhirah. It happens to us, all of us. What is so special about this story that Allah subhanahu wa is talking about in the Quran? And Allah subhanahu wa has said, Subhanallahi asra bi abdihi layla. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who took his abd. And abd is not complete without body. Abd is not complete without body. So the body and the spirit, the physical person of the Prophet was made to travel on that night. And on the way to Aqsa, the Prophet was shown certain visions. One of them was of the people who had long nails of metal and they were scratching their faces and their bodies with it. They were self-mutilating themselves. And Jibreel alayhi salam told the Prophet <coughs> that these people are those who would backbite, who would talk ill of people behind their back. May Allah subhanahu wa protect us from being those. Then there was another vision where there was people swimming in a body of water and they had nothing to eat but stones and they were filling their stomachs with the stones and with that their stomachs grew so huge that they started to become unable to move even. They would try to get up and they would not be able to get up. Jibreel alayhi salam told the Prophet that these are such people who indulge in business including riba, including interest. So, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that, all forms of riba, all forms of interest, whatever and however it may be. Then there was people who were served good, decent cooked meat and on the other end they had stale, uncooked pots of meat, meat with which can, pots that contain that kind of meat and they would not eat from the pure meat, the cooked one and consume the stale one or the uncooked one and Jibreel alayhi salam told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam that these are those people who had the halal opportunity of satisfying their desires but they still chose to use the haram way in any manner not not only in relationships but also in terms of eating in terms of everything they had a halal opportunity and still <coughs> they chose haram over halal May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us in eating, in our relationships, in whatever way possible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us halal everywhere, but it is only a matter of caring for it and a matter of going and making an effort to find it, find it out and seek it and then use it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from halal. There was, there was another vision shown to the Prophet where there was people who had big swollen lips and big tongues and their tongues were being cut by metallic scissors and Jibreel salam told the Prophet that these people are such that they used to accuse people of things that, that were not true they used to falsely accuse people of things May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all those things. Some good vision was also shown. There was a vision of uh, people who would sow, then their crop will grow immediately, and then suddenly they'll also be able to cut it and reap from it, and then their crop will again grow to that same size again. And this is what this was their business. Jibreel alayhi salam told the Prophet, these are the people who struggled for your deen, for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through their lives, through their money in whatever way, whatever form. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who struggle for the deen of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Finally, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa reached Aqsa. And from the narrations we learned that someone called Adhan and Iqama was called, but all, there was Anbiya gathered there. All the Anbiya were there, who have, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said that from Adam to Isa, there, there isn't a single Nabi who wasn't there that day. 
and all of them were there and they were waiting for their leader to pray to, to lead them in salah and jibreel alayhi salam took the took hold of the hand of the prophet wa sallam and moved him forward on the leading uh, leading musalla from this the ulama have said that this is one among the many hundreds of proofs that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the superior most even among the anbiya and in that same gathering in books of hadith there have been narrations of the speeches made by prophets sayyidina musa alayhi salam came forth and delivered, delivered a khutbah and he and he praised allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and told how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him somebody who could talk to the prophet to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sayyidina daud alayhi salam gave his own speech and said that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me honor by softening steel and metal for me and made birds join me in the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sayyidina isa alayhi salam sayyidina sulaiman alayhi salam all of these the key keynote anbiya they gave their speeches sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam then finally the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave his own speech inshallah we'll talk about that speech next week but at the end of that speech sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam rose and said that because of these features that muhammad has mentioned today he has gained precedence over all of you he is superior most to over all of you may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a value of being the ummati of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam the great honor that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done to us by without us even asking putting us in the nation of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding of this may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us uh, realization and the um, zeal to bring into our lives whatever is heard and whatever is said Brothers, I'm ready to sing. I can do something.